Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My, who's Signs? Why do all these people have strange names on there? Oh, 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 we're blue in this game. In a stunning turn of events, it's raining in England. Furthermore, the Swindon Red are wearing Swindon Blue. Oh, whatever. Uh, Leighton Orient had re really wanted to wear their red um, kits, and who am I to begrudge them when we are sitting 18 points clear of second place in League One? So um, we don't have to worry about this game. We can lose it if we want. In a related story, we are not starting John Green or John Green. <laughs> um, Groberts is also on the bench, fired by Wilson Groberts, as is Merrick Merrick, and of course, one size fits all, was lately red carded, so he will not be starting. Instead, we have Cormac McCarthy, um, Pulitzer Prize winning novelist and hero to many. All right, we're gonna try to win this game, and I'm gonna talk about whether I'm a pornographer. The actual question was, should, um, should, parents have the right to, cho to choose what their kids read in public high schools? Now, in my opinion, the answer to that question is a flat no. Um, however, I'm going to go into more detail um, and in the process answer why I do not think that I am a pornographer. So my book, Looking for Alaska, is taught in a lot of high schools and it is also frequently challenged um, by uh, concerned parents and or uh, concerned citizens who don't have any kids in the school but just like to, uh, you know, have a hobby. Um, and then they try to get the book removed from the school curriculum, and sometimes they fail, and sometimes they succeed, and and it's you know it's annoying. It also um, I think really hurts like the oh green eggs and Fodringham overall quality of public discourse because you know then people are naturally afraid to teach anything that might be controversial because they don't want you know like look it's a really hard freaking uh, job to be a teacher, and you don't necessarily want to add to the challenges by teaching something that uh, that might be deemed controversial by one or more of the parents of some of the kids in your in your class so um, you know I am hugely sympathetic to that position I have to say and I don't I think if I were a teacher I probably wouldn't teach looking for Alaska to be perfectly honest with you but I'm very grateful to the teachers who, who choose to teach it um, but anyway these parents will, will get upset and they'll say like well I have no way to prevent my kid from reading this uh, this this wretched pornographic novel now my novel is not pornographic pornography is titillating it's erotic it's meant to arouse um, there is an oral sex scene in looking for Alaska that is one of the least I don't want to brag but one of the least erotic sexual events in human history um, it uh, it couldn't be less hot it involves, uh, I'm just going to say what it is, a young woman uh, places her mouth on a, a guy's penis and doesn't know what to do, and the guy doesn't know what to do, so they just sort of sit there for a little while, you know, still life, mouth and penis, and then, um, then they call it quits, and that is the end of the scene. So, I don't know if you're aroused, but I'm not. Um, and, I mean, I don't even think it's like a, yeah, anyway, it's, it's not hot. Um, and it, it, its purpose in the novel is like very, very clear with, uh, with any level of, mm, boy, we are really, uh, without one size fits all, and of course having sold sea stuff in order to buy one size fits all for his inflated price, uh, are, we're a little weak in the back. Um, good lord! Okay guys, come on. I know that we're wearing blue, but let's pretend that we're wearing the red of courage. So, um, yeah. But the, 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 the real, the underlying question is, who decides what's acceptable reading? Um, or, and it's not just about reading, it's not just about English classes. Like, for instance, if you don't believe in evolution, your kid still needs to take biology. Um, and, you know, a huge part of, like, you really can't have any conversation about biology without, or not much of one anyway, without talking about evolution and the role that evolutionary pressures have played on, you know, diversifying and then not diversifying life on the planet. Everything worked out better than expected. I mean, we are playing like, like we need to change into our red kits at halftime. This is not good. So uh, I am not, yeah, I am not a pornographer, no matter what people might say about me, and I'm totally confident in my not being a pornographer-ness. Oh, that needed a better shot. We call him Bob. I needed you to put some oomph in it. Um, but it comes down to whether, whether an individual parent should be able to decide, A, what all the students in the class learn, and B, what their particular kids learn. 
Um, so the answer to A is an obvious no, right? Like if I think that, uh, for instance, The Great Gatsby um, is a novel that, that, mm, that was coming. If I think The Great Gatsby, oh, you were offside! Ha, 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 your goal doesn't count, your goal doesn't count. Sorry, I don't mean to be like that. Um, if I think that, for instance, The Great Gatsby is a novel that promotes uh, capitalism and I am a communist, um, I cannot go and say, like, we need to remove this capitalist filth from the school. Alternately, if I think it's a novel that promotes communism, I can't go and say we need to pr remove this capitalist filth from the school so that other kids don't read it. Now, when it comes to my own kid, though, that's a somewhat different conversation because, say, I want to say, like, I don't want my kid reading this capitalist filth um, and, he, you know, this kid is legally required to go to school um, because it's public public school and you're required to go until you're 16 so you are forcing my kid to read capitalist filth and I don't like it and um, so I'm gonna tell you that you can't do that well no uh, at least in my opinion because public schools don't exist for the benefit of parents as I have said many times nor do they exist for the benefit of students um, they exist for the benefit of the social order and as such um, we have to trust people to design a curriculum that, um, that will teach uh, our, the young people of our nation the things that we think it will be important for them to know. Um, and we decide that collectively. Um, and the way that we decide it is, you know, in lots of conversations about what should, you know, core curriculum and blah, 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 blah. But ultimately, at least I think, in a good world, the way that we decide it is by trusting and empowering teachers to teach um, like to teach what they n know is best for their students and to trust them um, at least you know insofar as is practicable and I think it's practical to to, um, to trust them on a lot of things so um, oh god green eggs in Fodringham oh, desperate times in the Swindon back um so I think, uh, I, you know, I think we have the experts. They're called teachers. Um, we have the people who, who, who do this for a living. They're called teachers. And if they aren't good teachers, then get them out of the classroom. But if they are good teachers, then empower them and trust them and stop, uh, stop standing over their shoulder and asking them whether it's okay uh, to teach X or Y. Uh, don't ask them whether it's okay to teach evolution. Don't ask them whether it's okay to teach a, a book that they want to teach. Um, they know, you know, they are trained and th this is literally what they do. So stop trying to do their job for them and let them do it. Um, and I, I don't really think that we need to, uh, you know, I, like my kid is gonna learn things in school that I do not agree with one little bit. Um, he may, you know, read about oral sex before. Oh, green eggs and Fodringham with the game of his life. Guy's probably made a hundred saves. Uh, we're just not fast enough. We're not fast enough without the John Greens to play that game that we like to play, the over-the-top game. Um, but we're gonna, I have a feeling we're going to find a way to steal this game from Leighton Orient because their humiliation will not be complete until they've taken 47 shots, um, accomplished nothing, and lost the game. So I feel good. I feel good. I think we might need to make one substitution, but maybe not even. That's, that's a through ball. That's through. And then he got fouled. Then back to Leroy Williamson, please. What a goal! What a goal! What a goal! Oh, Meredith, play me the song! Leroy Williamson, he scores occasionally. Leroy Williamson, he scores occasionally. He doesn't always score. Leroy Williamson, he scores occasionally. Leroy Williamson, he scores occasionally. Also, sure, he's personalized. It's just a thing of beauty. When everything comes together like that, Leighton Orient have had 87 shots on goal. I think we've had one. And look who's winning. The Swindon Blues. Um, I will never play in blue again because it seems to make our players uh, lack courage and focus. So, um, yeah, that's what I think. I, I, I know that's sort of a radical position, but um, I, I think my kid is going to learn a lot of things in school that I don't agree with, and I'm okay with that. And I understand that, like, that's the... Oh! Oh, that's, you know, that's what public education is. Um, 
and I could, I, I, you know, parents have a voice in that conversation, but it should really, it, it really should be the voice that any other citizen has, um, because public education is about that. Um, it's about that's that's the conversation to me. It's not like, but my kid is going to learn X or my kid is going to learn Y. Um, you know, when we when we made the public education bargain as a as a nation, that was essentially the deal that we made. Um, congratulations to the Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers. Green Eggs in Fodringham, rightly surrounded by his beloved Swindon Town Swoodley Poopers, because he had a heck of a game, just like he has a heck of a chest. He always does. He always gives that little uh, that little patty rub there at the end. I like that. A little bit. It's a half pat, half rub. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.